now their heart was so hard they couldn't have faith and hear the word of God and act on what he said. Because that's what a hard heart does. It resists the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm. If we had just Mark's account, we wouldn't know that Peter walked on the water and that the boat was translated with the occupants to the other shore. Mm -hmm. We get a little different slant from each gospel. In order to get the full story, we need to put them all together. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the natural realm. Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, but Matthew 14.30 specifically says... But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. So Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, the Spirit, the Word of God, and started to look at the conditions around his physical body. That's where we'll fail. When we start looking at the natural, when we're talking to God, God is a spirit. He's not a man. He doesn't think like a man. You're not going to get the result a man uh, okay. gets when you listen to God. You're going to get God's results yeah. if you follow his instructions, right? Well, Peter had started out good. He walked on the water and then stopped following what God said. He stopped coming. Jesus just told him to come. He didn't, stop, he didn't say, stop and check out the weather. <laughs> Tune in Channel 4 and get the weather report before you get out here and let me know what's going on. Well, Jesus is in the midst of the storm with him. He knew exactly what's going on. And he told Peter to walk on the water, didn't he? Yes. So why should we consider something else? That's what Peter did. What did the wind being boisterous have to do with Peter walking on the water? When it comes right down to absolutely nothing. The wind and the sea, the lightning, the water could do nothing to keep Peter from stop walking on the water. Amen. Jesus told him, the things in this world that are attacking you physically, financially, spiritually, can do nothing to stop you from obeying God's word. And we blame it on Oh, well, I didn't get enough money this month, and I can't pay my rent. Or, oh, I have this pain, and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll probably die. No. What does God's Word say? It says, I'll take care of you exceedingly abundantly above what you can ask or think. And by, your, by His stripes, you've been healed, 1 Peter 2.24. If God said that, and you follow that, there's nothing can stop you from getting healed Nothing can stop you from paying the rent, even if you have to go to another place. God will always protect you and follow His Word to a T. Because your faith, mixed with His Word, brings results. <coughs> Peter's faith, getting out of the boat, mixed with come, God's Word, would have got him all the way. But mm -hmm. he considered something else. He considered circumstance. So if Peter had kept his eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, Hebrews 12, 2, he would have walked on the water all the way to the Lord. Hebrews 12, 3 says, Consider Jesus, lest you faint in your mind. That's what happened to Peter. So it connects <coughs> thinking with faith. What you think you're going to do has everything to do with your faith. What you think is going to affect you has everything to do with your faith. So we've got to think like God if we're going to get God's results, right? We can't think we're going to sink. We can't think the wind is so bad I can't walk forward. Or that I'm going to drown. You can't think you're going to die and be healed. Right. That's called double-mindedness, right? Amen. Amen. So what you think <coughs> is going to have everything to do with your results. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Circumstances will not affect us if we'll keep our mind on Jesus, the Spirit. Romans 8, 6. Let's turn there. Would somebody please read Romans 8, 6 for me? For to be carnally minded is death, 
but to be spiritually minded in his life of peace. Okay, to stay in the spirit would have uh, been Peter's job to keep his mind on Jesus and what he said. To be carnally minded would simply, carnal means natural, to start thinking natural. Naturally, you can't walk on the water. Nature does not let you do that. No. So I must not be able to do that. If you're going to go do what God says, and he calls you to do something supernatural, and you're thinking natural, you're not going to be able to do it. That's exactly what happened to Peter. You've got to think supernatural. You know, 1 Corinthians 2.16, we have the mind of Christ, so let's use it. The mind of Christ does not think carnally, folks. My, Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, and we're raised up, Ephesians 2, 6, 6 uh, and seated in heavenly places in Christ. So we're already there with him at the right hand of God, and he is the head, we're the body. So we use his mind and his thoughts, his thoughts are my thoughts, his faith is my faith, his results is my results, and that's all I know. Amen. Paul said, I, all I know is Christ and him crucified. Don't ask me anything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to look at doubt and unbelief. <clears throat> So natural things and carnal mindedness has everything to do with doubt and unbelief. You can't believe God. Come, walk on the water when you're looking at the storm. It's going to bring doubt and unbelief. It was Peter's choice and what he chose caused him to sink. It's our choice every day and what we choose causes us to swim or sink. Causes us to either have peace or death. What do you want today? You want death today? No, I don't. I want peace. And keep your mind on the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God. Keep your mind on Jesus, right? Hebrews 12, 3. He had already proven that he could walk on water, Peter. He had already defined the laws of nature. What, what did he say? What was Peter saying without saying an word? He was saying that what I'm doing is above nature. What's that? Supernatural. Above nature. Do your actions during the day as you walk following God define supernatural? When you walk on the water, it does. Because you're walking on circumstance. Water is a circumstance That's of the true. natural. That's true. When you walk on circumstance, you're walking on the water. Circumstance, you can't help me. You're down there. I'm going to walk. It's just like your enemy. You're putting your foot on the enemy's neck. You will not rise against me. I have overcome you, and I will walk on you. So the natural, in the natural, he couldn't have walked on the water if it had been a perfectly calm day, could he? If he's in the natural, even in the best conditions, nobody's going to be able to walk on the water. Or it's a trick photography. The wind is something just, it completely took his attention away from Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, the evening news sometimes takes our attention yeah, away from Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> and, and the evening news doesn't have a lot of good stuff in it. Does and I think it, it perpetuates the negative stuff. Deal with. Right. We could say that about a lot of things. Because you don't watch it? Thank you for watching these. You're driving along and this good looking chick's hooked along the side of the road and you're watching that. And then you run into somebody and you're inching away from driving, right? Yeah. You paid the price too. Same thing. Yeah. What's your wife catch you doing that? So when Peter took his eyes off Jesus and began to look at the wind and waves, he started focusing on the natural realm. Then your, or the natural realm probably begin to flood his senses with thoughts like, you shouldn't be here. This is crazy. You can't do this, Peter. You're so oh, dumb. We're back here. And then he thought, am I dumb? Why am I doing this? You know? And then he goes, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Jesus reached out and grabbed him, you know, just in time. Have you ever heard the natural talk to you or try to limit you? <laughs> Ever one of us have. We've had thoughts like, this is crazy. 
I can't do this. They, they'll say things about me and I can't let them see me doing this. Well, who's talking that? Who's saying all those things? The devil is behind a lot of it. And he uses the natural to bring us down. So why should we let the devil use the natural against us? Because he comes in through the eye gate, the ear gate, the way we feel and the way we think. That's carnal mindedness. So why should we let him play his tapes and his videos on our imagination and give us pictures of us in a casket or in a car wreck or in a sickness or broke? Why don't we play those tapes all the time? Because that's called carnal mindedness. Because we take our mind and our attention off Jesus, off the Word, and we stop thinking about natural things. 1 Corinthians 4.18 says that while not looking at the things seen, but the things not seen, because the things that are seen are temporary, mm -hmm. passing away. But the things not seen are eternal. That's who I want to keep my eyes on, is the eternal. Mm -hmm. And folks, you can do a lot more than you think you can do. Your thinking is way below what Jesus wants you to think. Start thinking I can do this. I can do this thing. It's above what I can do or think, but God does above what I can do or think. Right. And if He can do it, I can too. If He's leading me to do it, I can certainly do it. So then the natural realm probably gave a flood of senses and those thoughts that I talked about. Have you ever heard the natural talk to you or limit you? Remember, you're a natural being called to do the supernatural when Christ lives in you. Well, that's not fair. Is that fair? God called Vern a natural, living, breathing, limited individual to do supernatural things. Yeah, yeah. True. Well, Vern's telling me about a, a, a table and a set that they're building. This bought beyond your ability, right? But you're doing it, aren't you? Yeah, we did it, yeah. The devil told you you couldn't do it, right? That's right. You're doing it, and you know what? Because you're doing it, and defying the natural, a lot of people are going to get saved and sent to heaven because of you, Vern. Mm -hmm. Because you stepped out on the water and said, no, I'm not going to be limited because God's called me to something greater. Mm -hmm. So we've all been taught that we're limited to the natural all our lives. And I'm just a human being after all. And I can only do things that human beings do. Well, I've heard of miracles and things like people shooting point blank at somebody and not hitting them. That's the God that I serve. Yeah. Who do you think you are anyway? And you want to walk on the water? That's exactly what the devil would say to you. Well, who do you think you are? <clears throat> Child of God. You know, every time I hear people trying to limit me and say, you can't do it, it just makes me want to do it. Yeah. And when I see people talking to other people, telling them they can't do it, I want to go to that person and tell them they can. <laughs> I don't know why this is built in or something. That, it is built in. Uh, I've got to, I, I got, I got to be, I don't know, I just want to be God's, God's dummy. <laughs> and he uses a lot of people. You know, I want to be used. You do too, right? Mm -hmm. be, because Nolan, First John four seventeen, is built right into your spirit. It is as he is, as he is. So we want so to be. Amen. Amen. So are we. Amen. We so desire to be. World. Yeah, yeah, we this desire world. to be that way. That's mm -hmm. what Jesus did. Man, the Pharisees were telling him every day, "You're just a bozo, man." And <laughs> it's this way. It's not that way. And yep. he didn't talk back to him. He just knows who he is, where he's going, what his father's told him to do. <laughs> we don't have to talk back to anybody. We just got to know who we are, where we're going, Amen. and who our father is. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank our you. father's rich beyond any man's wildest dream. I might look poor, but I'm rich. First Corinthians 8 9, he became poor that I might become rich. So, 